Release the Kraken! Greetings fellow game designers, Ron here at Lame Duck Studios. And today we're going to be in Maya 2022 and we're going to look at how UVs work. So, uh, yeah, hop into Maya 2022. Not a lot of, whole lot has changed since uh, 2018 through, you know, the various versions. Most of it looks the same, a couple of new icons, no big deal. Um, I'm going to close a bunch of this stuff on the interface here. Let's see, I'm going to get rid of the mannequin, turn that off. Uh, I don't need my attributes, I'll turn those off. And, wow, my outliner's over here, that's a bit different. Okay, let's turn tool settings off here. Uh, let's go to the channel box, and I'll move my outliner uh, over here. I prefer a dot here. Okay, let's turn that off. All right, so uh, UVs 101. Let's go ahead and add a cube, and I'll go ahead and press F to frame up on it. And in general, uh, this is going to be a what of or what are UVs kind of tutorial. So this is a beginner tutorial. If you guys are familiar with UVs, you can kind of skip this, but this is a uh, beginner tutorial. Okay, so this is a cube, and a cube consists of uh, six faces, right? One, two, three, right? And then we have over here, four, five, and six. Six faces. Each one of those spaces you can think of as a plane. So if I already take a plane, which is just a square, go ahead and add that to my scene here. And you don't have to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and just set this um, so you can kind of get the idea. If I take this plane and I rotate it, take another one, you can see that this is beginning to make a cube, right? And we can actually see this if I take all of these, go ahead and get rid of those. If I take my cube, uh, right click and hold and go up to um, vertex space mode right here, it'll separate my cube into the various spaces. And you can see each one of those is an individual plane that has been you know, rotated and oriented in the correct way to make a cube. Now why is that important? Well, when you get into UV unwrapping, you have to take a 3D object and you have to cut it up and unfold it into a 2D object. And that can mess with you the first time you try. And in some cases, it takes a bit of practice to, to orient your brain around the wrapping process. Um, so cube, sphere, these all unwrap a little bit differently. And you'll kind of look at those um, as sort of like an overview. So go ahead and take a look at both of these. You can kind of see how those work. So I'm going to jump up, make sure I'm in modeling mode here. And then I come over to UVs. I'm going to open the UV editor. Uh, my toolkit popped up. It's fun. I'm just going to take my toolkit and attach it to the side here. Try that again. Ah, it's being stubborn. All right, minimize. Sometimes this opens up really big. Let's go ahead and close this down a little bit. See if I can dock this onto the bar. There we go. Okay, so this is the UV editing window. And careful as you move this around, this is going to try to dock to different things. Don't <laughs> try to avoid docking it to places. Uh, it'll dominate your screen. But here is the UV layout of our cube. And you can see it is six faces or six planes lined up next to each other. If I were to select the sphere, the sphere has been unwrapped into a single, um, you know, flat, plane-like shape. And you can see that it has been actually cut. So these up here, these are cuts, and then it's been cut all the way down the back. Technically, this is the side, because that's the x-axis. And then it's been cut at the bottom. You can see the triangles, top and bottom, that's where these intersect. And then these edges on the side are where this cut meets. Okay. Go ahead and nuke the sphere. And I grab the cube, and we are going to unwrap this uh, by ourselves. So all of your polygon primitives will come in pre-unwrapped, but when you start making more complex shapes, you're going to have to start to unwrap. So it's a good idea to get practice on simple shapes first, so when you get more complex shapes, you don't uh, get overwhelmed. So first thing, I'm going to go ahead and just reproject this. So I'm going to go up to Create come down and um, 
you can do this in a mul multitude of ways. You can do planar, which takes a picture or a UV um, projection of your object from a direction. So if I come down and do um, X, it's going to take a projection from the X axis, which is this one. If I hit apply, it'll give me a single projection like this. And this is both of these faces, this face and this face. All of these are compressed along the, uh, the narrower edges. So they're, they're kind of stacked on top of each other. So this isn't ideal. If I were to do the y-axis, it's going to look the same. I'll make sure I go back to object mode here. Uh, it looks the same because it's a plane from either side, right? So now from the top and bottom, we have this face, but then the edges are compressed on top of each other. Again, not ideal. We want to take a projection that gets us the best, um, the, the maximum space of our, of our uh, object, maximum volume of our object. So we have a few other options. Go ahead and close this one. Let me jump back into object mode here. Go to create uh, spherical. You could probably try that. This is a cube. It would try to unwrap it in the most logical way it can if it thought it was a sphere. And it gets pretty close, but we have this stuff over here. So that's no good. I'm going to come down. Let's try um, cylindrical. Cylindrical gets this kind of the same deal. It tries to unwrap it but then we end up with this little spot over here. So no good. When it comes to uh, or um, inorganic shapes or geometric shapes, kind of like this, um, so geometric like blocky, you're actually better off going up and doing an automatic. Don't use automatic for an organic shape. It'll just shred it. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit automatic. And you can see how it took this and it took the best uh, plane from each direction. So now we end up with six planes. But the problem is it's harder to identify where these planes are relative to this object when they're all stacked like this. So what you do is you reorganize them. So I'm going to take them all. Now I W to bring up my move tool. I'm going to just move these off. And the first thing I need to do is identify um, one of these to be my base. Up to you. It doesn't really matter the order so long as you can figure that order out. Okay. So I'm going to go to the front of my cube here. I'm going to assume that the front is going to be my starting point. So I'm going to grab that. And I can select it here and you can see it selects it there. I'm going to go ahead and just move that over. And I moved it to this block for a specific reason. So um, prior to Maya 2016, um, Maya didn't really have a lot of options for UDIMs, which is the additional UV tiles. Uh, and a lot of programs don't really use them. Almost every program only uses one UV tile, and it's this UV tile right here between 0 and 1. So you see this graph here? 1, 1, and 0. So this square of space here is the primary UV tile that every program is going to look at. Everything outside of here are your additional uh, UV tiles that some programs like ZBrush or Mari might look at. Um, but for our sake, we only need the first UV tile. And when you're going to do unwrapping, unless you have a specific program that will look at the additional uh, tile positions, you should always be unwrapping to the primary tile, which is from 0 to 1. Okay, so here's this first tile, our first um, piece. And now all I want to do is start attaching the other pieces. So really easy, I'm going to go into edge mode. Then I'm going to take my left and right sides. I can do this uh, all at once, but I'm going to do one at a time here. So I'm going to grab the left side. I come over to my toolkit, come down to uh, cut and sew, hit the drop down. Now we have this neat little option called stitch together, and we have an A and a B and a B to A. Depending on which one you have will determine which one snaps to which. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, A to B and hit snap, uh, stitch together. And you can see that the, um, the tile over here jumped and attached. And now this is sewn together. So now I have uh, my front face, which is my Z axis, and then my left face, 
on my negative x-axis. Okay, let's go ahead and do that for the right side. Grab that, and you can hit stitch together. Hey, now if you happen to be in a situation where you went to stitch together and your uh, main object went that way, go ahead and hit Control Z and then choose the other option. In my case, A to B worked. B to A might be the one for you. Okay, so now I have my left and my right. I'm gonna work on my top. Now you could go bottom um, from front and then go down to the bottom. There's no harm in doing that, but um, it's up to you. I'm gonna go from my front face to the top. And then you can hit stitch together. Now the shortcut command to repeat the last action is G. So if I just press the G key at this point because I've already used stitch together once, it'll repeat. And I can do that again and again. And now I have my UVs and now I have my cube unfolded, which is great because I have the maximum amount of space that I can paint on for my cube. But you can see that my um, my cube is outside of my primary UV tile, which is this guy in the middle here from 0 to 1. So I have a couple options. I can bring up the scale tool by pressing R, and I can manually scale this down and then position it where I want it. Or I can use the layout function. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, um, I'm going to close the uh, cut and sew, come down to arrange and layout, scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to choose layout. And what this is going to do, Maya is going to lay this out for me and try to get the maximum amount of space. And you can see that it scaled it exactly to the edge and then it framed it for me. Now I prefer to have this middle, but you can leave it right there and it'll be just fine. So I'm just going to scoot this more center. I'm going to be very careful not to uh, grab the thing in the middle. If I grab the middle dot and I try to move this, I might slide in all directions. Instead, I'm just going to use the arrow, and that'll make sure that I can't go up or down. Cool. There's my object, and it's ready to be painted on. So I'm going to bring this over into Photoshop now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right-click, and I go to UV mode. Go ahead and grab my UVs. Um, pro tip, you can once you're in UV mode, you can double-click on a UV, and it'll grab the whole UV shell. Then I come up to Image come down to UV snapshot and this is going to take a picture of our UVs so that we can paint on them. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this off into the default folder. This is going to go in Maya. I really hate that it goes to OneDrive but it's okay. Um, for my students you might have to go to browse. So what you'll have to do, you may not be able to save on the regular desktop, you might have to go to your RTD2 which is under my computer and then you should see uh, your H drive. You can say I have an E drive and I have a D drive, um, but you will have an H drive if you're at the uh, in the school system. So you would want to save there. Okay. But if you're at home, you can save at the default location, which is I'm going to hit cancel, which should already be right here. Okay. Go ahead and change the format. I'm going to make this a PNG. And then the size, I'm going to use 2048 by 2048. That's going to give me a really good uh, 2K texture. We don't really need to go any bigger than that for this case. Um, and this is a very simple cube. We can really get away with uh, something smaller like 128 or 256. Um, but standard is uh, 2K, which is uh, 2048. And then when you get into 4K, that would be 4096 and so on. But we don't need high depth. So uh, 2048 is good. Just so I don't have the uh, out UVs. I'm going to go ahead and select just the out UV part. You see the whole address and then there's a slash. Just grab the out UV and go ahead and name it. I'm going to go ahead and call this one uh, cube uh, UVs. There we go. And then I'll apply and close. And I'll override the old cube. That's fine. Okay, let's hop over into Photoshop. Okay, in Photoshop, um, we're going to go ahead and open our UVs. So go to open. And then you want to look for wherever you saved your object. So in my case, um, I'm on my documents, but you might have your H drive if you're at school. So you want to go to your H drive and find that. 
the default folder is actually in documents and then Maya where are you at Maya and then projects default and then images so if you can save um, on the school computer it'll go here if you save at home it should default to here as well again depending on where it goes and I'm gonna look for my cube UVs so uh, cube UVs and grab those all right open and it doesn't look like much right now but I have a clear background so to make this easier to see I'm gonna come over to my layers tab and at the bottom here we have this little yin yang symbol I'm gonna go ahead and open that up get a solid color and I will choose uh, what's good I think blacks okay now my solid color appeared above my layer one but I want my solid color to be below that so I'm gonna drag my solid color down have my UV show up to make my UVs easier to see I'm gonna go ahead and grab my UV layer uh, first let's go ahead and name it double click the, the word layer let's call this one UVs that way if I lose track of it I know where it's at go ahead and double click just outside of the uh, the word here that'll open up our options I'm gonna come down let's do a stroke hit the options here and I'm gonna give a stroke outline I'll do four and then you can pick a color for your outline uh, let me do I'll do wipes okay so now our UVs are easier to see and now we get to have the fun part we're gonna paint these so let's go ahead and create a new layer so to do that there's a little plus sign down here we'll do that I'm gonna put this layer below my UVs okay so I should have um, my background layer my UVs and then my layer one I'm gonna call this one color now I don't want to paint on my UVs I want to be able to turn those off okay if I keep them on whenever I create a texture uh, these will be visible so let's go ahead and do that real quick I'll go ahead and hit file let's go ahead and save and I'll call this cube UVs um, I'll leave it as the uh, Photoshop file so PSD is fine and I'll leave it in the images folder let's save hit OK I'm going to jump back into Maya. Go ahead and uh, minimize. I'm going to go into object mode. So right click and hold object mode. Let's go up to rendering and grab a Lambert. It's this middle one right here. I'm going to go all the way to the end of my list. Click and hold on that arrow and grab Lambert. Um, if you don't see your um, your attributes editor, you can grab it by clicking on these three lines here or you can grab it on the end over here you can also right click and hold and go down to material attributes and it'll get you here as well okay I'm gonna go ahead and name my new Lambert this is gonna be uh, cube color and then for the color I'm gonna load a texture so grab the uh, little square come down to file now it's gonna deselect everything it's okay uh, jump over to the, the right over here and we have an image uh, name open up the folder and go ahead and find your uh, source image so it's going to be under uh, depending on where you saved it you have to look for it or you can go to the default folder so I'm going to go to documents and then Maya projects default and then I saved it in the images folder And you can see where are you at? Cube. Uh, this is UVs. Uh, There's the PNG. I want the Photoshop file. Ah, oh, there we go. So I'll grab that. Hit open. And then to make sure the te the texture shows, I'll press six. And there we go. So there is the texture wrapped around my cube. And you can see the UV outline there. That highlight that we made, it's on there.
And if I open up my UVs, UV editor, grab my cube, you can see that here. Uh, to make it easier to see, I'm going to turn the grid off. I'm going to go up to the grid, which is this, and click it. That'll turn the grid off for my UVs. And now you can see the layout there. Okay. Let's jump back into Photoshop. I'm going to go to my color, and I'm going to paint whatever I want um, here. So let's grab a paintbrush. And I'll grab a color. I'll make red. To make the brush bigger, I'm going to right click and then drag my brush size up. Cool. And then if I paint, there's my first tile. And it doesn't matter if I paint outside the lines because uh, Maya will only read where the UVs uh, overlap. So if I go ahead and uh, file and then save, jump back into Maya. You can see it's updated, and this being my bottom tile, if I look underneath, there it is. And even though I painted outside the lines, there's no extra, right? Because this tile is down here. It's nowhere near this red. Okay. Now back here, you can see how when I overlap this tile, because this tile is connected to the next one behind it, it got this part. Okay. Now jump back in. Let me do a different color for this time. Do green. And I'll do a different color for each one. So maybe um, let's do this fuchsia color. Purple, that works. And let's go and grab something else. Maybe yellow. Uh, it's more green. Get some teal. And what's a good complementary for teal? Orange, I think. There we go. All right, so now I have my tiles. I'll even be extra fancy. I'm going to go ahead and grab black, and I will write. Uh, a number on each one of these. So for my first one, I'll do a 1. I'll do this one as 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Let's go ahead and save that. Jump back in, and you can see it's been updated. Look at that. We have our cube. There's the one, two, three, four, and then five, and then six. Hey, we have our cube UV'd, and we have a texture map applied to it. We can identify which face is where based on our map. So now we have a texture map to go with it. And you can actually see the outline. If I deselect this white or grayish outline, that is the UVs from Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. Those are going to disappear, and then I'm going to save it out again. So save, jump back in. If I deselect now, you'll see that those outlines that we had are no longer visible. There we go. And that'll do it. So we have successfully uh, unwrapped and textured our cube in this example. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and do a sphere. So go ahead and save your work, and I shall see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. Misty and I both thank you. If you enjoyed that video you just watched, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, I'm getting into NFTs. Those are those are big these days. I was thinking about creating my own coin, but we'll, we'll get into that uh, at a later date. But uh, NFTs are pretty, pretty hot right now. I'm converting my artwork to NFTs. You can see my uh, rareable uh, page right here. Well, I got four items, but I'm adding one uh, as they go. They're not cheap to make, so i gotta got to make them as they go. Um, if you want to you know, support the channel other ways, of course, there's Lambda Studios merch, which you can see right here on my Teespring store, as well as Amazon. Speaking of Amazon, 
I have my books up there uh, under Bruce RF, which is my pen name. Um, Life and Times of Dana Martin, as well as the Guardian's Path of Ascension. You can flip through those and see the reviews and um, yeah, you know, grab a copy, read it, tell me what you think. It helps me out as an author. It also helps me out as you know, it all everything goes back into the stuff that I'm doing. So. Uh, more content for you. If you want to keep up with me throughout the day, or just kind of see what I'm, what's going on in life, uh, hit me up on Twitter under uh, BruceRF1. Again, that is my pen name. If you want to see uh, what's going on in my blog, RonFlowersJr.me, you can see what I'm writing about, um, what else is going on in life, uh, difficulties that I have with my uh, projects that I'm working on. Um, a lot of my devlog stuff kind of goes there before it comes here, so it's another way of kind of getting into that. I do also have a Patreon where I release content early if you want to get access to uh, things ahead of time, because uh, most of the stuff I produce, I'd like to, I do things on Sundays and I post on Wednesdays most often, but it goes to um, Patreon first, so it's kind of there usually a week or so ahead of time and then it has a release schedule. So if you want to see things early, go there. Uh, let's see, what else? What else is going on? Uh, you can also follow me on Facebook under um, you can do the Lame Duck Studios Facebook or the Bruce RF uh, Facebook. Both of those are available. And a lot of these links are down in the description. So if you want to just like hit those up and just click on them and follow them through, that's another way of getting there. Also, we are at 1,300 subscribers. Woo! Uh, we're this close to 10,000. But small milestones first. Let's get to 2,000 subscribers and then we will continue our road building toward uh, that 10,000 milestone. That is going to be pretty, pretty awesome for this channel, my humble, humble channel. So yeah, that's that's all I have for you on this outro. It's a bit of a long one with a lot of stuff going on. Anyways, stay tuned, and I shall see you next time.